curiosity, wonder about what happens after we die. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation, devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub, and in that, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. But then there's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of disprized love, the law's delay, the insolence of office and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietest make with a bare vodka. I mean, who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But that the dread of something after death, death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will. And makes us rather bear those ills we have than to fly to others we know not of. Thus conscience doth make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickled over with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pith and moment. With this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action.